All right, welcome back to Oresto's Garage. So I'm um, just doing a little shop update. What's happening, what's upcoming in future episodes. Um, should be a pretty good one. Um, yeah, well, how about I just turn the camera around and show you what's been going on in here. All right, so HG update. Just welding in a new plate here. So just burning her all in. Uh, it's all been uh, epoxied for now. Have a quick look around. Nothing much to see. So it's almost all one colour, except for the front clip. Still doing that. Uh, I've got some pitting in here I need to repair. But because we've got a lot of rain and stuff happening, I just had to, you know, cover up the exposed metals. But um, yeah, that piece there would have been uh, this one. So that's why cut it out because it's ugly. So. All right, so what I'm doing at the moment is getting this uh, inner channel for the, the rubber that runs through here. Um, I'm gonna cut that one out and just put a, another bit of metal straight through here. This one here, I'll trim out here to here. Or probably Depending on, if I can tack weld those, I'll be happy. But I might just cut it to there. Just bend a piece of metal in. Same with there. But it all depends on how bad that rust is behind here, once I pick it all out. All right, well that escalated pretty quickly. So, once I got it all out, the piece just decided it had enough. So, I just chopped her out from here. Um, and working my way, sorry, and working my way up to here. I'm gonna do a relief cut in here, roll this back over so I can get into here and take this. All right, so this is what we're up to. Just a rough in at the moment. I'll finish off a little bit of a tack weld in here. This guy here. But um, it's all in there now. Still got, haven't bothered with that because that's just all seam seal through there and over the top here, just like the rest of it. So, yeah, we'll just keep going. All right, so back on this side here now, I've got this one set up to where I want it. I've drilled some holes, so I'm going to spot weld it in and then I'll get up to that part there. First of all, I better throw a weld in here. So at the moment, I've grinded all my spot welds back. Um, penetrated straight through it pretty good. So next, I'm just going to start shaping this section and this section and to match this section. And then I'll trim it. I'll do the same with this. And then I'll just add this last section in here. All right, so kind of blew through the old metal, but I fixed her up there. It's not the neatest, but tack welded there, one more in that. Um, cleaned all this on up. Uh, another weld under here. Piss that booger weld off, tack that back up. Uh, and yeah, knock this one back over. Seam seal it. Well, after I wire wheel the whole lot of this arse end, and then I'll seam seal it. And that's pretty much done for that section. All right, just a quick once around before I pack up for the day. It's a Saturday Arvo. Um, just put this in a bit of epoxy for now. And then I'll go through clean it out all on Monday. But other than that, she's coated. Nothing much to see. Just those shitty floor pans. Um, yeah. I really want to cut those out, put new floors in them. They just look terrible, outside and inside, so, I don't know. I'll get into them. It's not my choice, so. All right, the HG's got the black around the radiator support. Um, 
It's not Raptor, but it's just stone chip protector. I've used um, just this one here. It's uh, yeah, if you can read that. There we go. Yeah, so that's all I use to do under the car. And it's just straight from the tin uh, with the car builders spray gun all up under there so it's normally a flat shine like that but I put a bit of um, gloss over this one just because it's going to hit the firewall I just want a bit more protection on it Nice and shiny, yet again. That's just got um, three coats, no clear. It's just a product uh, for these Kingswoods don't have a clear. So um, that one's just, just straight black. So the main thing about when you're painting a car is preparation. So when you have a look at these, I can scratch this off really well with my fingers so it's like a you know even watch this you know underneath is shiny so when you're in a hurry to paint just walk away don't even bother you need to prep these surfaces properly get a nice scuff on it and then you've got to go through your steps of body filler if you want to use your body filler. But what I normally do is go epoxy, then I use my body filler, primer, then I high build, and I go back to a primer. But everything needs to be sanded. If you don't sand it, this shit just peels straight off. So HG bonnet sanded. It's um, high build and primed on this side. Um, a little bit more to do in here, just still got some more rust. I gotta sand out and treat, and then should be ready for a paint. So, what I'm doing is cleaning up this um, driver's door. So, just gonna see how bad that rust is there. We come around, we just got a bit of scuffle through here, and then some fellas gone and um, tried to fiberglass this here, so I'll have to find out how severe that is it doesn't feel bad but yeah just get rid of all that scale and then all I'm doing is cleaning these ones out because the time I pop them out they um they're broken so I'm just they're so old all these plastic retainers in here so I'm just using my die grinder with a oh, two inch um, pad on it I just grind them off easier and another rust hole in here oh, get to it eh alright so it's not pretty but we've got the shape back in there again I uh, got rid of all that um, five glass where is it can't find it where the hell did it all go? Alright, chunks of the shit. Alright, so flash ahead. I've got the front clip painted. I've got the uh, firewall around the windscreen all painted. Uh, inside the dash. Uh, that's got to be all... No, sorry, what I'm going to do on this one, because it came out so shiny, I'm going to rub it back and put a clear coat on it. So, um, because it's going to be a blue and white roof and the customer wants a clear coat put on. So, uh, white from here, straight back, down. But the only reason why I painted this section here in the front clip is because... Um, 
I want to put it back together. And I didn't want to put it back together unless that front, um, the front clip and the firewall were painted all around. And then I can, um, before it goes on, I'll sand and uh, clear coat it and go from there. But yeah, my workshop's trashed. Um, yeah, I've taken it up to a spray booth to get it painted. I just had to paint that section here, put it together, tow it up the road in the complex to um, put it in the spray booth to paint. All right, tech tip. I saw a oh, someone trying to explain how to sand bog the other day on a car. Now, fair enough, you can get it that way, but if you want to sand a car and you've got body filler on it, the right, best way to do it is you're going to get the natural line. So you go like that. So naturally you have two hands on it. So it's do a cross direction. So what it's going to do is naturally follow the body line. You don't put your guide coat down on top of your um, freshly put down. Just say, it's gone off your body filler and now it looks like this. So, and now your body filler looks like this. I'll zoom out a bit. So, we've got body filler like this. You don't go and put your, um, your guide coat over that because all you're doing is rubbing it off before you um, can find your highs and lows. So, you knock the top down, just stay like this. You get and then you come back and you go the other direction. What that's going to do is get the angle of the body panel correct, right? So say I've knocked that down, I'll fast forward to it. All right, so I've knocked it down. What you want to see, I don't know if you can see, but I've got a cross hatch going on here. So that's given me one way this way, you know, you sand it, then turn around and you come back this way. Now I'll go put a guide coat on because I've still got an edge here, 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 and all around it. I've got a low spot here. So what I'll do now, I'll get my guide coat, which you can get this guide coat anywhere in any local body shops. It's a dry powder. Uh, just scuff it on. Doesn't have to be pretty. And then we continue to go in a crossways like that and it'll show out your low spot to reapply the body filler. Now that's what it'll look like. You get your cross one way, cross the other way. You know that's going to be perfectly aligned with the panel. All I gotta do is put a bit of a um, body glaze over that. Go out and buy yourself an onion board. Looks like this, you can peel the piece of paper off. So it does, your body filler won't soak into this like it does cardboard. You can go get yourself a disposable applicator or you can just use the metal ones. I got both, I got different sizes. But these ones here you can just throw it in the bin, you're done with. Um, and spread it evenly out, your body filler. So when you apply your body filler, don't just cake it in a bowl and then wander over to your car and start putting it on. If you leave it out in a nice layer, it'll last a bit longer. And it all depends on your temperature, humidity, and how much hardener you put in it. All right, that escalated very quickly. This HG had a when I first got it, I had a crack along here. So, um, I've done a quick repair on it. So I tack welded in, and then I welded around it all. But that part was fine, but then I noticed the crack this morning just kept running right along this whole top of this quarter to here. So I've cut it um, straight across because I wanted to stop the, the crack. And I found out, here's the piece, 
So after I got rid of all the, the body filler out of here with these old pieces, so it was cracking right down this line here around it. So that's the piece I welded in here. Which looks fucking terrible. But there's more being cut out, so. And this one here is held in by hopes and dreams. All right, so I've got two, oh, all these tailgate bits laying around. So there's the original one there. Reason why I changed the inner skin is because of that issue there. To there. All right, the bottom end was just rooted. So I got into it, unpicked it. Um, this one here, it might look worse, um, but what I'm using is this section and that part there, because the other one was all chopped up. But I've got this other bit of the tailgate under here. It's in way better condition. So it has got a little bit um, just in here, which I'll just cut out that section there, just cut it out. And um, I'll use one from the other side, which is well, still, I think this side here. Nope. Jeez, that one there. I can reuse that um, section on the other. It's a bit of hacking and chopping and ripping apart, but to get a decent tailgate these days, um, they got more rust on the floor, in the vacuum, in my lungs, through the workshop than anything else. All right, so putting this uh, inner structure in for um, uh, the winder for the back window. Uh, this section here is all in now, spot welded in. Um, got a new spot in here I'm welding in. I've started on the back here, but I'll move around to the front to finish it off. I'll clean this section up here, rust treat it. And move over to this. So the inner part, uh, clamp it all down, make sure everything all lines up. It should, because it's all on that. It's only the outer skin what's different. Inner structure. Um, reason why I swapped that around, I don't know if I showed you in the first video. Yeah, so the other piece that's still on the car, well, it's over here. So I didn't use it because it was rusty there. This one was hacked and chopped here. But yeah, um, that's what it was like. It just, it wasn't right. Um, missing the tabs down in here and here. So if the guy went to put his winder in, it wouldn't have worked. It was never gonna work in the first place. So um, yeah, now we've got a full one in there which I'll just put some weld through primer on that um, and then give it a bit of a scuff up and just rust treat it from there. So just doing this um, edge here as it curves in. So it's the way I do it on these smaller jobs because I like this, the smaller vice is easier to work with because uh, for me, because I'm so no much room, but all I'm doing is, I don't, I could use a um, pan brake, but I like to just smack the hammer with that edge straight in, just like that. Obviously harder, and it creates that edge there, so. Uh, as you can see, it's starting to form there. And I just go back and forwards. That one's probably needs a little bit more. But yeah, that's just how I do it. Um, then obviously I do my little fitment, see how it goes, and then I work it out from there. So obviously it needs a bit more, just to get that rounder edge. All right, so under the cover here, I've got one of the, the guards I've just done with the, 
the flutes for the um, the GDS style here. So what I'll do is I'll show you what the way I do it to get them in there, the measurements and stuff like that. There's there's a lot of um, nothing on the internet on how to do it. Uh, it's only my third time at doing, but um, HQs I mainly do done them on so um, and that's going back for 20 odd years ago so um, yeah so that's the guard so, the customer wanted the flutes put on he supplied everything um, here's your dark like always so marked it all out I'm not going to sand that out because that gets cut out um, so now I'll trim this up, get it nice and squared up. So at the end of it, this place is trashed. The left of that, that's the cutout of the other one. All right, so at the moment, we've got these flutes just sitting in here. Um, it has to get lined up a little bit better than what it is. Uh, a little bit wide there, but that's not too bad. So, yeah. That's where I'm up to. Yeah, had a little bit of a fuck up, that's all. But, um... Yeah, once she's in, you won't even notice that's there. So... Alright. Bloody compressor. So, got my piece I've been measuring up here. Got a pie cut in each section to keep it straight. I don't worry about those, I'll tack them up. But I had to stop a crack, it was just kept forming along this ridge line here. So, all I've done is a 90 degree bend here. And I've done, I think it's uh, probably about a 45 on this edge here because I want to try to keep that as strong as possible along here so this is all straight this bit here is a, she's a little bit high here but once I trim those off tack weld that up um, spot weld all in here and then just start working my way through I'm setting up these my rough drawer in here for this section here I'm trying to keep um, corners to a minimum but this one is going to have to be a straight corner there uh, over here I'll probably end up um, coming out a bit more rounding that off because I don't want a straight um, straight weld off here because it will crack and then have a look at all these rivets, measure up with um, the trim pieces and then put these other rivets in this one here. Um, it wouldn't have worked for the amount of bog sitting in this one. I'm a bit worried about this side here because there's still bog all in here um, of how deep it is really. I only replaced these sections in here on that pinch weld. But, yeah, all right, I'll get back into it. All right, laid some color down on the inside. So, I'm gonna have to do panel by panel on it. So, yeah, getting there slowly. Still gotta put a clear on it, it's just a base coat. So, it's got a nice shine to it. Reason why I'm doing it um, panel by panel doesn't matter with this color it's all the same um, it's just the fact that I didn't have that um, primer go off so I've been sending everything back and doing it all in one coat um, with the primer new stuff and then on top of that I wait the day and then I give it some I, you know, throw the base on it all right, so got it partially done. So just letting everything do its thing here. Uh, 
Um, yeah, so jams are done. Still got roof to do, re quarters. Uh, most of the inside's done. So, and she's coming along, the bonnet's all good to go. So, yeah, quite impressed how the it all started turning out. Yeah, that's the HG.